Here we are back at Atlanta is ours, the great campaigns of the American Civil War. Supply and the active-passive command situation in this game is perhaps a little bit different. Similar but different to some of the other games in the series, none of which I've really played very many of. Uh, and in the advanced, and in particular for the advanced rules, the active passive calculations seem to be a little more robust in this game. So there's a fair bit of uh, monitoring and math, and that's what I want to get into right now. So the first, so the first thing I want to say is that the the great campaigns of the American Civil War uh, user group on Facebook has been very very helpful and uh, helped me step away from the cliff of uh, of denial and frustration and you know packing the game up and burning all uh, all my copies because uh, I was uh, going around in circles on this but I got a couple of uh, player aids that helped uh, from folks uh, it seems that the French are very interested in the American Civil War uh, perhaps more so than the Americans are for some reason. It was all French folks that were, were helping out. So, uh, well, not all French folks, but uh, many French folks. So uh, the <clears throat> here's what happens. Sherman here, dear old Sherman, starts the game up here, I believe. And in, in order for him uh, to, for, in order to have unfettered activity without restriction, basically... Every unit needs to be within eight hexes of Sherman. And that's a little difficult given that uh, McPherson took off down here. This is how basically how the game starts. Some of these guys have moved a little bit, and obviously these guys have moved. We're, we're, uh, I think we're, we're halfway through turn two. But um, so the, all these guys down here start out of the eight hex range of Sherman. And I began moving Sherman down here thinking, well, you know, I need to get these guys back in range. <clears throat> but of course, this then puts some of these guys out of range. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, all these guys, which there are quite a few divisions up here, and we'll get to why that's important in a minute. And uh, so, so there's this problem, right? Uh, if our job is to get to Atlanta, which is to the right, uh, two maps away, the we need to capture Dalton, clear the rail line, and basically, you know, shuss on down on down the, the rail line and use that as our primary route of access, which kind of makes sense. Uh, as the Union player, I've got a supply depot over here, which has supply points in it, and they can be used to feed the troops. And we're going to talk about supply in a second if I can try and get through this uh, command passive business. So, so every four turns, we do this command control thing and we count up the number of divisions and groups of, and sets of three brigades or regiments. So, uh, and then we add all those up. And so for every division, we're gonna take four points and for every three regiments or brigades, we're going to take two points and we're going to add up how many of those points are eight hexes or more away from Sherman. Now, there are some other things that factor in demoralization and all this other stuff and out of supply or whatever it is. They're kind of ancillary and we haven't got to any serious combat. So primarily, first part of the game, eight hexes away from this dude, you accumulate these points, that's going to drive the number of command points, which I currently start with six, that I will uh, have to spend to stay active. And uh, let's just see. So in order to stay active, for instance, if I add, added up all these factors here that were out of eight points range, and it uh, was just 16 to 19 points, it would cost me five command points to activate. If you get up to like the 27 factors or points, keep in mind it's four factors or points per division that's out of the eight movement point range or the eight hex range, uh, then you can't even go to active. You have to stay in passive mode. 
when we do this cohesion check, if I, uh, there's a cohesion check you have to do to see how many, you know, who, who is within Sherman's range. If everybody's in range, you get a command point. You get one command point every four turns, is my understanding. So it takes a while to accumulate, but the cost to spend those command points is very high, even, uh, so it was gonna cost me five command points for between 16 and 19 of the, if I had, uh, say I had four divisions outside of the eight hex, eight hex range, that would be 16 of these points. I would, uh, I would have to spend five command points to remain active, which means this guy would go down to one, and it would then take me four strategic cycles to get one, two, three, four, actually five strategic cycles to get me back up to the point where I could have six command points to then, assuming everything was the same, uh, actually it would be four uh, cycles, would get me up to five, and then I could spend five again, assuming I only had the same number of units out of range, right, <clears throat> of Sherman. So you can see that, generally speaking, we're going to be in passive mode because it's going to take, so here's these blue stripes over here, right? That shows us, here's a strategic game cycle, here's one here, here's one here. So every four turns, I'm going to get a command point if I have everybody within this eight hex range. So what does that do, right? So why, why is that? So what that's doing, there's a whole rationale for it historically, obviously enough, but what it's doing is basically forcing you to focus in, let me see if it pulls camera back a little bit, focus in on this rail line as an approach, bring your forces together within eight hexes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, so basically that sort of range, right? Which is fairly significant, but at the moment, you, you start out, and I don't know that I can fix it within four turns and still be playing the game and forcing the Confederates to retreat and stuff like that. So I would have to move all these guys back towards Sherman or move Sherman back uh, towards them. By moving him towards them, I put all these guys out of his range, and that's going to force me into a passive mode, potentially, or make it very expensive for me to be... Uh, activate it and use up all my command points. I can't just strip this, this area up here. I can't just strip this area up here because I have my depot here and my supply, which then leads us to supply, right? So I've got to protect my supply line. I've got to work out how to consolidate my forces and bring them together. <clears throat> you know, I had all these guys were, were, were over here. We're trying to pull all those together. I've got uh, two brigades all the way down here. Now, Here's the odd wording. If I if I had three brigades down here, it would absolutely count for two points. But there's only two brigades down there. So unless I find another third brigade floating around, I'm gonna have to I'm not gonna be penalized for those guys down there. But of course I do have one. I have one right here, for instance, that's out of range right now. So uh so that that that's a that to me was a little striking. Once I sort of wrote it all down on a piece of paper and looked at, I went through and counted all the divisions and all the brigades, and then thought, hmm. Well, if if every uh, what's that going to be? Every for the first twenty four turns, I'm potentially only going to be active in active mode for eight of those turns. So. What is, what's the difference? The, dif the difference in being active versus passive is your ability to just allow units to attack effectively. Uh, you can't conduct grand assaults unless you have certain types of leaders. Everyone loses a movement point. Uh, there's all sorts of negative effects. So it's important to, to be passive as little as possible. So this is all obviously given you know the number of turns in the campaign. It's a long game, right? And <laughs> I'm probably not going to get through the entire thing is my guess, but we're going to have a go at it. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. So we're keeping on. So let's keep on with this conversation. So we, we got to work out how uh, to make the most of our four turns of uh, active mode to start with and then make a decision. Do I then immediately roll over and go to passive then or do I try and allow myself to be active again for the for another four turns? and potentially cut off a significant portion of his army 
uh, maybe force uh, force them into some dire straits and then roll into passive for the next 20 plus turns <coughs> and that will slow down the cadence of the of the campaign significantly I, I so i don't know the answer to that question yet the other thing we have to factor into all this is the supply that i said i would talk about and supply is another interesting thing and it's almost and i'm probably going to get yelled at by all the fans here it's almost not worth worrying about because of the union the union forces receive 26 supp supply points uh, every uh, every four turns they have 21 divisions and for every three brigades just like in the uh, in the the command the activation the activity uh, active versus passive counting for every three brigades we spend a point as well and of those that adds up to uh, excluding the July reinforcements it adds up to exactly 26. So I have exactly enough supply for everybody, but what's the catch? The catch is those units uh, to, in order to receive supply or to be considered in supply need to either A, be within three hexes of the railroad, or what is the other, it's 15, uh, you can be adjacent to a depot or whatever the case may be, but uh, be on a road or railroad path uh, five hexes away from a wagon with supply points or uh, units at a f at f up to 15 hexes from a depot which is on a rail line and or a wagon with with uh, which can supply basically three divisions and, and, and three three brigades so in essence <clears throat> I think what I can do here is say basically say as long as every unit is within 15 of the rail line and they have a clear path back to the depot with the supply, you're good to go. Now, I don't want to be more than 15 anyway because I need to be within eight to be within range of Sherman to be allowed to have myself to have the best chance to get command points and be active. So we can, I'm thinking <laughs> for, for the union anyway, as long as I keep everyone within 15 hexes of one of these rail lines, and you know, if I need to, I can uh, shuss off a, uh, uh, a supply wagon and let it be uh, within you know five hexes of that or whatever the case may be. I think that's what I said, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, then that that allows me to have these uh, units, for instance, these guys all the way down here, uh, allows me to uh, try and keep some of these guys in supply pretty easily and that takes a layer of uh, complexity out the more complex problem of course is this whole uh, you know being within range of sherman thing and starting the game in a very difficult situation where you're you're well spread out down here uh, so I, i'm thinking this whole command point thing it's probably not going to be as big a deal as I thought it would be because really what I'm going to try and do is uh, for the next eight turns let's play in this space here move these guys this direction keep Sherman up in and around this area somewhere so that he can be as close as he can to as many people as possible F try and force these guys to either retreat or fight where they stand and die consolidate all the forces together in this area and then just stay within eight hexes, accumulate command points and then decide when, if and when to go uh, into from passive to active mode, uh, allowing of course for these little areas. Now, here's one thing that I hadn't thought of and I just thought of this morning. Do the units that have to be the strength points and therefore the brigades and or divisions that have to uh, garrison the different counties as part of the Vitrid conditions, do they count as being eight hexes away? If that's the case, we then have to look at, you know, looking at the entire map, right? There are, there's probably a dozen counties. And if I have, uh, you know, uh, I have to have four strength points and a cavalry strength point, in every county to maintain control of it, that's going to quickly start to add up. As that has to, that'll basically mean that I've got to have um, 
I've got to have, uh, let's say a dozen, I've got to have a dozen brigades. So that's going to, well, that's only going to, that's probably going to automatically give me, it's actually going to be, it's actually going to be 24 brigades. That's going to add up really quickly to impact the, the counting of the number of factors more than eight hexes away from Sherman. So that's a, that's a complication uh, that we'll have to, we'll have to think about. I'll have to go look at the counties now and see how many there are. And as we move down the map, all the one, all the guys in the rear are going to be out of that eight hex range. And as we're trying to conquer them, of course, like for instance, here, Bartel, uh, uh, where is, here's the, uh, that looks like the seat of Bartel where that red star is. Uh, we're going to have to, we're going to have to work out how we capture those and garrison them, uh, and add that into the mix. So it's a little hairy. I picked a comp complex module to get started with. I blame Eric Walters for that. He's the one that told me to play this. All right, folks, just thought I'd share that little, uh, well, that little insight into the game. Uh, it seems like the supply is kind of superfluous. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't waste too much time with it as long as I keep you, all my units within a certain range. Get outside a certain range, then you need to start uh, micromanaging with wagon trains and stuff like that. Uh, uh, and, and it's it's a, a simple and, and, and elegant way that they manage the supply trains with the wagons, but it's a layer that probably not needed given the uh, the length of each individual turn and things like that. All right, talk to you guys soon. Thought I'd share that with you. Ciao.